Hi everyone, and welcome to how to use the Null Sets software to turn any text you want into a JPEG. Um, this is based off a project called Null Sets done by me, which is Evan Meany and Amy Sapansky uh, down at the University of Tennessee. And it's a you know it's a it's a fun little thinker toy that you can use to sort of parse out um, large sets of data or large sets of text or maybe text as data or maybe image as text as data. You can see where it gets kind of complicated and why we think it's enjoyable. Um, okay, so uh, brevity, brevity. Here we go. So the first thing that you're going to do is go to our website and you're going to download the Null Sets Toolkit, which is this right here. This is going to drop this zip file on your uh, desktop, and you're going to open it. Hooray! There we go. Null Sets Toolkit. In the toolkit, you are going to see three files. A README, which is what you'd expect, uh, basically going over what I'm talking about now. And then a file called Beginning and End. You're going to copy these to your desktop. Oop, copy them over there. All right. There we go. Great. Now. The way this program works, it's a concatenation script that puts the text in between the beginning and end header and footer of the file, um, kind of like the JPEG standard wants it. So what you're going to do is you're going to need a text, naturally. Now, you can add your own. You can add anything you want. Um, we really, really like Project Gutenberg. They are this huge repository of free um, texts that is just really spectacular. And I mean, even if you weren't going to do this, if you just wanted to read a book, this would be a great place to do it because they just have so much. Um, we really love them. So I, uh, I downloaded the Phaedrus because of reasons. And uh, so I thought I would use that to make a null sets image and decide to go through this process. So here are the three things you need to start. You need the beginning file, the end file, and an RTF. It's really important that it's an RTF. So yeah, so here's our three files. And the next step is to open up Terminal. Well, Terminal, OK. Uh, you're going to want to use the CD command to get to your desktop. This is my desktop. Obviously, where it says echo, you're going to have your own username, your own computer name. So I'm going to CD change directories into my desktop. Then we're going to enter in our script, which is right here cat space beginning space here it is mine is plato because my file is named plato but this is anything any the name of your rtf so your name dot rtf space end space greater than space plato dot jpeg now again the plato is anything and that doesn't even matter at all that's just what you want to name the file at the end um, really, I mean, you could name it, I don't know, Space Dragon. I'm going to name it Space Dragon. Let's name it Space Dragon. Space Dragon. OK, so um, the beginning needs to be there. The name of your RTF needs to sync up with the RTF that's on your desktop. And end needs to be there. But Space Dragon can be Space Dragon. OK, so we hit Enter. Ah, and you see it up there in the corner. This is what it did. This is Phaedrus. This is the Phaedrus. This is what it looks like at a JPEG. But you're probably wondering, in a bummed out sense, just like I am, there's a lot of gray here. That's a problem. I don't want it to be so gray. Yo ho ho, let's fix that. So the default for the beginning file, which is in the header, it tells the JPEG and eventually how big it's going to be. In the beginning file, there's a piece of code that delineates the height and the width of what the JPEG is going to be. So let's open up the beginning file in a hex editor. Right here, I have HexFiend. It's a really great program. I'm going to drag my beginning file over in a HexFiend, and it's going to open it up. Look at all this lovely code. Um, <laughs> it's lovely. It's great. Um, it might be a bit much for us right now. So. I'm going to tell you the only the part that you need to really get into to change the uh, the size and shape of the JPEG. So you're going to look for a string that says FFCO and then a bunch of numbers. Don't change these. Just don't even do it. After that, you're going to see two bytes. 
1080, and then the next two bytes are 1920. Well, that sure looks like the dimensions of this little space dragon up here. Yeah. So here's what we're going to do. We're going to go in and change these to something smaller so the Phaedrus data will take up more room in the image. For the sake of you know doing it right, I'm just going to change it to a 500 by 500 square. Okay. Save this. And then we reopen up Terminal. And uh, if you're lazy like I am, you're just going to press up on Terminal. And since we only changed the beginning file but didn't change any of the naming aspects, we can just use the same thing again. We hit enter. Actually, tell you what, I'm, for the sake of this, I'm going to call it Space Dragon 2 so you can see the difference. Hit enter. And now we see very different things. Because we changed the parameters of the file, we're given we're cramming the same amount of data into a much smaller space, so it's going to fill the space a lot better. I actually, you know, seeing these two images next to each other, think that we probably went too far in the small direction. But this is for you to kind of gauge out changing those numbers in and out as you so choose, and um, yeah, sort of seeing how they look. Now, um, something I will suggest you do is uh, open these in different browsers. So this is what Apple, Apple's Preview looks like, and Apple's Preview is a great program. But the thing with picture viewers is they want everything to be a picture. When you open it up in, let's say, Chrome or Firefox or Safari, or really anything else, it's going to interpret the data just a little bit different, and you're going to get a lot of different types of pictures out of the same data set. So Space Dragon here will look different in Preview than it will in um, Safari, then it will in Chrome, and I really encourage you to, if you really want to try this out, uh, see where it looks best to you. I mean, this is where the artist part of your brain comes in and says, that's more aesthetically interesting to my purpose than doing this. Um, it's also kind of interesting, it might, might be a cool project just to take one file, you know, and see how the Phaedrus translates when it's translated through this process, but then also seen in, you know, 20 different browsers. Uh, yeah, so I think that's basically it. Um, you know, less talk, more rock. We've already been here for about eight minutes. And if you have questions, please go to our website. And there's more FAQs there, and you can always email us. Um, we're happy to answer questions. We like answering questions. And uh, we'll talk to you soon. Take care. <laughs>